hello and welcome back to Noah's Window. This week we've been talking about different emotions that maybe we've experienced over the course, especially of this last year. Um, Every one of us has a little different path that we've walked as we've gone through these difficult uh, months. But I think a lot of us have touched on and experienced to some degree these emotions we're talking about. So today we're going to talk about a really... um, difficult one because it's kind of one of those where it just feels like the black curtain falls and that is being hopeless. I feel hopeless. We're just too far gone. It's it's hopeless. It's over. We've crossed a line and we can't go back. So I hope that's not where you are today, but um, I know it can seem a little uh, grim sometimes what we're going through and particularly those of you who've experienced even uh, death and loss uh, on a on a great scale this year, but I want to encourage you with uh, some verses. But let's start with the story. As Mark and I were talking through this topic, this was the story he mentioned first, and so I wanted to share that with you. If we go to the book of Luke, and again, the book of Luke is one of the four Gospels. It was um, written not by one of the apostles. Luke is actually a physician who tells us that he gathered all the eyewitnesses that he could and took their their testimonies and organized them in a chronological um, manner. So Luke has given us a great resource in his gospel account. Now, in chapter 8, there's many things. So I I would encourage you to get out your Bible again and turn to Luke chapter 8 and read all the stories before the one that we're going to jump into here in a minute because a lot's been going on. And just before this particular story we're going to read, Jesus has um, taken a boat to the other side of the lake, the Sea of Galilee, and he delivered a man from demons. And now he's gotten back in the boat and he's come back to where he had started originally on the other side of the lake. There's a big crowds there. So we're going to jump in in Luke chapter 8 in verse 40 and read a little bit of this story, what's going on here. So it says, on the other side of the lake, the crowds welcomed Jesus because they had been waiting for him. Then a man named Jairus, a leader of the local synagogue, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come home with him. His only daughter, who was about 12 years old, was dying. Now, here we have Jairus. He's coming. He's he's a Jew because he's a leader of a local synagogue. And he's saying, my daughter's dying. Would you please come? And then there's this interruption. Now, it's interesting, this interruption. So bear with me. We're going to read through this little interruption before the story of Jairus and his daughter picks back up again. So the Bible goes on to say, as Jesus went with him, He was surrounded by the crowds. So he's on it. Jesus is already on his way to take care of Jairus' daughter. And verse 43 says, A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding, and she could find no cure. Coming up behind Jesus, she touched the fringe of his robe. Immediately, the bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. Everyone denied it. And Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing up against you. But Jesus said, Someone deliberately touched me, for I felt healing power go out for me. When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Now remember, Jesus and Jairus and the crowd actually are already on their way to take care of Jairus' daughter, but there's this interruption. There's this what happened and this interchange with this woman. So while this woman just got a miracle, something else happened. Verse 49 says, while he was still speaking to her, this woman that was healed, a messenger arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. He told him, your daughter is dead. There's no use troubling the teacher now. He said, it's hopeless. It's all over. Just don't bother. Jesus doesn't need to come. Verse 50, but when Jesus heard what had happened, he said to Jairus, don't be afraid. Just have faith and she will be healed. When they arrived at the house, Jesus wouldn't let anyone go in with them except Peter, John, and James, and the little girl's father and mother. The house was filled with people weeping and wailing, but he said, stop the weeping. She isn't dead. She's only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him because they all knew she had died. Then Jesus took her by the hand and said in a loud voice, my child, get up. And at that moment, her life returned, and she immediately stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were overwhelmed, but Jesus insisted that they not tell anyone what had happened. Okay, so what is more hopeless than when death has come? That is, in in our existence as a human being, that is when it's over. Is that not right? It's, it's when it's over. And that's what seemed to happen here. In fact, it was so over 
that the servant just said, don't even bother Jesus. It's too late. It's hopeless. So as we can see in this story, glorious story, isn't it? It wasn't too late. Death doesn't stop Jesus. Jesus is the author of life anyway. Remember, he is life. He is the resurrection. That's not going to stop him. It's not going to stop him for this little girl that was raised to life. And when she died later, uh, it didn't stop him then either. Because even when this life comes to its end, the Lord has told us that we will live forever. So we shouldn't be hopeless. Um, I know the situation, the situations that we're fi- facing, whatever your particular one is, maybe it's a health crisis, maybe it's a job crisis, maybe it's just being overwhelmed by the troubles in our country and around the world, whatever it is that makes you feel hopeless, just remember there's there should be no hopelessness in the Lord. He still has a plan and he's going to complete his plan. So a couple more verses I want to give you on this subject. John chapter 16 is Jesus is talking here, and this is in the gospel that was recorded by John the Apostle. But in this particular passage, Jesus himself is talking. And Jesus says, I've told you all this. Now, I'm not going to read the all this, so I hope you'll go get your Bible and, and turn to John 16 and find what's the all this he's talking about. That's important, okay? I have told you all this so that, there's that phrase, so that, that he's about to tell you something important. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Our peace isn't going to come from our government. Our peace isn't going to come from finances. Our peace isn't going to come from good weather. Our peace isn't going to come from anything except Jesus Christ. But we can have peace in Him. He goes on to say, Here on earth you'll have many trials and sorrows, but take heart, be encouraged, because He says, I have overcome the world. This world hasn't overcome Jesus Christ. He has overcome this world. We're still living out this particular period of time where the evil one is doing his thing, but Jesus is going to evacuate us soon, and we're going to be living eternally uh, with him forever. But in the meantime, even right now, even today, we need to fulfill our assignments that God has sent us here to do to represent him. Okay, so let's look at Philippians 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 6. And Philippians is a letter that Paul wrote to the church at Philippi. And so Paul says, I'm certain... That's big. I'm certain. This isn't he thinks so, maybe so. He said, I'm certain that God, who began the good work within you, are you a Christ follower? Has God begun a good work in you? If you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, he has. He's begun a good work in you. Paul says, I'm certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until until you wipe out and it's all over. No, no. Okay. He will continue his good work within you. Until it's finally finished. When is that? He's about to tell us when. On the day when Christ Jesus returns. Let's stay busy. Let's stay focused. Fulfilling the things that God has designed for us to do. Completing our destiny. Whatever that is. Whatever whatever your walk of life. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey. Let's be challenged to fulfill. And have God fulfill in us. And surrender to him to fulfill in us. Because he's promised that he will. He's going to continue his work in us until he comes back. So he hasn't come back yet. I expect him any minute, but he hasn't come back yet. And in the meantime, let's continue to allow him to work through us. Um, And that's where we're going to find um, encouragement and fulfillment and even satisfaction in this weary world that we're living in. We need to know that there's no reason to be hopeless We shouldn't be hopeless. We have the Lord. He's overcome the world. He's still working in us, and there's still a future ahead of us. So I hope that encourages you today, whatever you're facing. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we're so thankful and grateful that no matter what we're facing on any day, that you're still God, and that you still have a plan, and that you still have a a destiny for each one of us individually, and that you are still working in and through us. And we're trusting you for that, Father. Please give us the strength. Help us to be focused on you. Help us not to lose hope, but to remember that in the midst of all our troubles and sorrows, you've overcome this world that we're living in and that you're going to carry us through and give us the strength and the courage and the endurance to continue to work for you in this life. I pray that you'd use each one of us as we surrender to you. May we be glor- May you be glorified in our lives. And we'll thank you for that privilege. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I hope that you're encouraged today. And we'll look forward to seeing you again tomorrow for one more uh, uh, emotion that maybe we've been feeling 
this year that we want to talk about. God bless. We'll see you soon.